I, 26 male, fell in love with my sister's partner. This began around a year ago when my sister had to travel for work for an extended period and her partner got into a bad car accident just a week after she left. Without going into much detail, he needed someone to stay with him and help him get around for a while. I do freelance work from home to support myself, so they asked me if I could go and stay in their home for a time as her partner's temporary caregiver while he recovered. Of course, I immediately agreed, wanting to help in any way I could. Her partner and I were already good friends before this situation, but living with someone and being there in some of their most intimate moments strengthened our bond even further. We bonded over our many shared interests and got to talk about more profound things that were typically off-limits in a group setting. It was too late to distance myself from the situation when I realized my changing feelings. I had committed to helping him for the duration of his recovery, and a sudden change in my behavior would just tip him off that something was wrong and add unnecessary stress to an already challenging time. He'd express feeling like a burden more than once, so I pulled away the little bit I could, and we rode out those last few weeks together before he was back on his feet again. To make a long story short, the period that followed was full of guilt from me and confusion from my sister's partner by my quick disappearance following our time together. He eventually texted me and asked if he'd done something wrong during our time together made me angry somehow, so we met up and I came clean. The conversation was a brutal one and it eventually ended in both of us agreeing we would limit our time together from now on as there was no hope for an actual future for us. It would simply be too weird given the history. Fast forward to now, the two of them got engaged somewhat recently and this past Saturday my sister asked me to be in her wedding as part of her bridal party. I asked her to let me think about it, which already caused some tension, and told her yesterday that I was incredibly grateful for her offer but had to turn it down. I'm fine attending as a guest, but being in the wedding party just feels too much. She's now furious with me and is demanding I give her an explanation, which is something I've refused. Am I the idiot? Edit, he did reciprocate my feelings. We decided it was best kept between us and he never told her anything about it, to my knowledge. They didn't have a traditional proposal and my sister was the one who initiated it. He told me that she knows he's bi. He told me that he respects my sister and doesn't want to end the relationship abruptly with no real reason he can disclose. He has had relationships with men in the past and she knows this. He and I text occasionally, but not often at all. See, here's the thing, OP. You weren't an idiot for developing initial feelings. It's not something you can generally control. However, you are a giant flaming idiot for admitting those feelings to her SO. You should have distanced yourself as much as possible when you developed feelings and never said a word. It almost feels like you wanted your sister's SO to admit reciprocated feelings. Secrets never stay secret. You've essentially loaded the gun and cocked the trigger and now it's just a waiting game before your actions blow up her life. You are the idiot for having an emotional affair with your sister's fiancé. Was it just emotional, though? Did you sleep together? You already admitted the feelings were reciprocated. Why stop now? Your poor sister, though. She deserves better than this. So grow up pair and tell her the truth. Don't let her marry someone who doesn't love her back. This is an unbelievable betrayal to your sister. You're a grown man acting like a love-struck teen who can't control themselves. You should never have spoken to her fiancé in the first place and created this godforsaken mess. Then, hiding the fact that your sister's now fiancé admitted to having feelings back, that you all met in secret to discuss, and that now you're just going to let her marry someone who has had an emotional affair? Major idiot. Mistakes were made, my dude. The question for you is, do you really think she doesn't suspect something between you two? But honestly, what's your endgame here? Are you hoping to keep this secret buried forever and hope you somehow forget this happened? How can you let her marry him when you know what you know? Like, what kind of brother does that? If I found out my sibling did this, it would be the end of our relationship. You are letting her marry someone who also has feelings for you. That is wrong. I, 40 female, have a daughter, a young teen, who asked me if one of her Christmas presents could be a trip to the nail salon. She wanted to get long acrylics done like she sees a lot of other girls wearing. I'm going to say that acrylic nails are a waste of money when press-ons are much cheaper and can look just as good when done properly, even though they don't last quite as long. I wear press-ons pretty regularly, which she knows. When she asked if I would take her, I said no and explained my reasoning. I told her that she could look online or I'd take her to Ulta and get her press-ons that I would show her how to use. 
Since that sounds cheap and because it isn't about the dollar amount, it's about where the money is going. I told her I would try and get her a hair appointment and she could get something fancy done. My daughter objected, saying that nobody gets press-ons done and that press-ons don't look good. Admittedly, I felt hurt as I do a pretty good job on my nails. I told her she could take my offer or leave it, but she won't be disrespectful. She continued complaining about how she'd be made fun of for having press-ons and not the real thing. I told her if she got her own money, I'd take her to the salon, but I'm not paying for something I feel is a waste of money. My husband says I'm being too harsh and that acrylics are a status symbol for girls now. I said she's a young teen, she doesn't need a status symbol. He pointed out that we could afford a trip to the nail salon. I agreed but reiterated that it isn't about the dollar amount, it's about the worth. My husband grumbled for a bit and they're both unhappy with me. Am I the idiot? You are the idiot, she's requesting this as a gift, not a general everyday thing. And just because you don't find value in the gift doesn't mean she won't. The gift is not for you, it's for her. And while press-on nails might be good enough for you, it's not what she wants. And given that this isn't a money issue, it's reasonable for her to get the nails she wants. This is like refusing to buy a kid a toy they want for Christmas just because you wouldn't play with the toy. And I'm so mad at the she's a young teen she doesn't need a symbol of her status line. OP is only 40. Is it really so hard for her to remember how hard it can be as a teenage girl to feel like you fit in? I'm not saying the daughter should get every little thing any of her friends have, but God, a little understanding would go so far here. Not the idiot. These are terrible for her real nails and can be a health hazard. I wouldn't do it, but I would happily pay for routine manicures, pedicures, etc. All beauty treatments should begin by at least not harming the recipient. It might be an idea for both of you to go together if your budget allows it. That is a tough age and the opening act of a tough era in most young ladies' lives. It's lovely to have a few no-conflict, fun rituals to share with your daughter. My parents were married and had me, a teen female, and my brother 18. My dad had an affair with Kate and mom and they divorced. Ellie, a tween female, was the result of the affair and Tommy, a young tween male, was born when dad married Kate. A year later, Kate died. My dad's family rallied around my half-siblings and tried to make up for the loss of their mother. My mom shared custody of my brother and me with my dad. He had asked her to include Ellie and Tom in her life after Kate died and even told my brother and me a few times that they would be coming to mom's with us and she'd be their mom now too. My mom never did take Ellie or Tommy into her home. I don't even think she ever interacted with them. When I look back at moments when everyone was present, she was always on one side with her family and dad was on another with his and my half-siblings. As they've gotten bigger, Ellie and Tommy expressed all the emotions you might have when you don't have a mom, but you sometimes share a home with kids who do. They got jealous, sad and frustrated. They've asked for us to share mom with them and want to come along when they hear mom is taking us on vacation. They wanted us to all spend Christmas together. All kinds of stuff. They also have just dad's side of the family since none of Kate's want to be in their lives. But we have both sets of grandparents and aunts and uncles involved in our lives. A few times over the years, dad or my grandma or uncle have asked me if I disliked that my mom wouldn't open her heart to kids who are part of my family. Of course, I always said no because they're not her kids and so it doesn't make sense to me that she would. My dad wanted to try and get my half-sibling's wish to come true for a Christmas where we're all together, including my brother and I and our mom. Mom said no. She didn't engage with him beyond her no. Ellie and dad then tried to get me to talk mom round and I said no and I told them I didn't want to do that. Ellie got upset hearing that and left. Dad and my grandparents then cornered me later and asked me how I could say that when I know that Ellie and Tommy feel left out and that they crave mothering. I told them I didn't care if they felt left out because it's not my mom's job to mother them and I would never expect her to do it. Since one can't be fixed without the other thing happening, i.e. their feeling left out, can't be fixed until they feel like they now have a mom in my mom, then I realize it's not going to happen. They told me my mom could and should have a love for them as her children's siblings. I told them dad should have thought about that before he cheated on her and got another woman pregnant while he was still married to mom. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. The only idiot is your father and any family member who put into those kids' head that your mother should have accepted and loved them as if they were her own. I get you saying it to them, but you got to understand that those kids have been brainwashed to believe your mother owed them something. Those kids need therapy, 
and to be removed from your father's care because he's doing a lot of damage with his BS. This. The kids believe what dad has taught them. They probably have issues with abandonment because dad has spent years telling them that OP's mom should care for them. Instead, he should have explained that their mom loved them but is in heaven and that the OP has a different mom. If dad wants all the kids to have Christmas together, then dad can make that happen, not insist on mom doing it. Dad is a lazy father in trying to pass his responsibilities on to his ex. I don't get why families act like this. Your mom has no responsibility to those kids whatsoever, and everything you've said about this situation is correct. Hold your ground, OP. This is so unfair to you and your mom for how they treat you. I hope they stop soon, otherwise they really are going to damage your relationship with one another. And you know deep down that no one in your dad's family would lift a finger to help any new children your mother might have had. So I've, male 38, been divorced from my ex-wife, 35, for 10 years. And we have two kids together, a tween male and a younger tween male. I remarried a year later while she's still single. I have three further kids, a tween female, pre-tween female and a female toddler. I have my sons over every weekend. About four years ago, my ex-wife opened an online business and she's been making six figures. While my wife is a stay-at-home mum and I make 30000 to support our family. So you can imagine how this difference has affected our two households. They live in a gated community, she drives a new car, and she and our sons go on two extravagant holidays a year. My sons came over this weekend and started to tell me and the girls they're going on a Disney concierge cruise in the summer. My daughter started crying, saying, Daddy, we want to go. And when I looked online for the prices, they were priced at $5,000 per person. It's been all they've talked about non-stop. I feel like their wealth is being shoved down our throats when we can barely afford to heat the house this Christmas. It's hard not to be hateful, but I sent her a long text saying to stop trying to make us feel less than. I also told my sons in private, please don't mention holidays or gifts around the girls. She replied by saying it's not her problem how we feel, and when she does nice things for the boys, my wife and I are the last people on her mind. Am I reading into this too much, or am I the idiot for saying she's spiteful? Holy mother of projection, Batman. Your ex-wife is doing well for herself and wants to treat her children well, and you aren't part of the equation here. Stop being spiteful yourself and be better for your kids. You are the idiot. My favorite part is when he pointed out X is still single. Like, that's the worst thing he can come up with about her. I'm sure she'll be sobbing into her Disney cocktails. I love how he adds that he had three more children with a new wife. Obviously, he had more children than he could afford and is now blaming his ex for his bad decision-making. They've been divorced for 10 years and their youngest is a tween. OP has a tween with the new wife. Chances that OP was cheating equals 99%. It's hilarious how he didn't expect anyone to do the math. Different people have different priorities. The ex-wife cares about making enough money to live comfortably, and OP prioritizes seeding several families in case we revert to feudalism and he needs to form alliances. So you got married a hot second after having divorced your wife, who had just given birth, then turned around and had a baby, and then two more, and now you're sad that your life didn't work out as well as hers. You are the idiot for having a stay-at-home wife while only making 30000 a year with five kids. Get over your insecurities, tell the new wife to get a job, learn how to budget, but most importantly, keep your nose out of your ex's financials. For context, my sister can stay here. Her dog cannot. I, 29 female, have a five-person household. My kids are a tween, a younger tween, and a young child. My husband is 31. My sister, 19, recently became homeless with her toddler son and dog. I'm her only option at this point. Our parents are scum, and we have no family that isn't estranged. She asked if she could stay here and has admitted there's no plan for the foreseeable future. She's still determining how long she'll be here. She only works part-time, so it's difficult for her to save. I told her she could stay here and so could my nephew, but the dog is not welcome in my home. I have many reasons for this. The main one is I'm not too fond of dogs. Other reasons being I have cats, and my sister's dog already attacked a cat back last year. More reasons? Well, I just don't want it here. I have the space, yard-wise, that's not the issue. I simply don't have the time, energy or patience for her animal. I'm also not going to be feeding the animal, and I already know that she struggles as it is. I have no problem helping feed her or my nephew, but I'm not footing an extra bill for a dog. 
I didn't tell her all of this directly, but she knows my stance on dogs and she also knows that I felt she should never have gotten the dog to begin with because she's never been what could be considered financially stable. She's had the dog for two years. All I said was she and my nephew could stay as long as needed, but the dog couldn't. She was immediately at my throat, questioning why I felt it was appropriate to ask her to get rid of her son's baby. I told her those were my stipulations and I didn't have the energy to argue, considering I'm already offering up a lot, my boys will now have to share a room just to give her and my nephew a room. She hung up after crying and saying I was being heartless. Am I the idiot? Edit, I told her to ask her child's grandparents to take the dog, but she is dead set on not wanting to separate her son and the dog. Not the idiot. Are our pets beloved family members? Yes. Is your sister in a vulnerable situation and desperately trying to keep her family together? No doubt. Does that mean you should have to house an animal that has already attacked one of your pets and whose requirements for care and feeding will likely end up being footed by you? Absolutely not. I understand your sister's situation, but she can look into having someone foster the dog or give it to a no-kill shelter. Her kid is a toddler. He's not going to remember the dog. Sister tried to use that as an emotional appeal, but it falls flat. Teenagers are rarely great dog owners in the best of circumstances. A teenager with a toddler, a job, and almost no support system definitely isn't the best home for a dog. OP, you're doing both your sister and her dog a favor. Yep, beggars can't be choosers, but unfortunately I guess her son and dog can be together either at his grandparents or a shelter. She needs to get her priorities straight and make compromises. The lack of gratitude on her part for you supporting her for the foreseeable future is astounding. It sounds like she has a lot of growing up to do.